So what if we want to add uh, more, more rendering, shadows and highlights? You might guess by now it's going to involve new layers. So let's just make a new layer for shadows and one for highlights. And I'm going to nest them in here by holding Alt Option and clicking so that they go under the white mask. And we'll call one a shadows. Actually, I'll keep it nice and short. SH for shadows and LT for lights. So it's taking a bit of time. So now we have our shadow layer. And there's, a, again, different ways we can approach this. We can we don't have to make it black. You could make it black and you could start painting in different shadows or whatever. And now the problem too is you're going to start noticing, see how it's going to be messing with the nice ink line. So we can either switch the ink line off or we can take the ink line down a bit. There's different ways we can deal with this. So I'll show you a few of them. For now, what I'm going to do is switch the ink line off. I'm going to work on the shadow layer and bring the opacity down to something that would be a bit more typical than that, maybe about 50%. And a friend of mine is a he swears by base 11, so he likes 55 because it's easier to type. Again, save some time. That's one way of doing it, and our blend mode is normal. We can change blend modes to all kinds of different selections, and this will change how the shadow is rendered. We don't have to render this in black, I mean, or paint this in black, rather. Let's go back to normal, go back to 100%. We could, let me just delete that. What if we make a shadow in a different color, totally different red? And this is very rough. When I paint shadows in like this, I, I really just blast it in in a very quick wash, and then I go in and fine tune it. So now we can go in and find a different blend mode. Darken looks really nice. That looks really good. And we're not getting like a, just a dead gray now. We're getting, depending on which blend mode we use, we can get completely different uh, results. That's actually kind of nice too. The overlay blend mode is very nice. So let me pick hard light. It looks very dramatic and it's really amplifying the, the color values and it make, makes it look like he's in like a, a kind of a UFO room or something. So that's our shadow layer. I do want to uh, go in and erase some of this. So I've got the eraser tool and I'm going to use, I have some presets here, but I usually I use like a soft brush. I'm using the bracket keys now to make it bigger and make the opacity a bit less. And now with the opacity a bit less, you can start to, to model it. So you get a much more subtle effect and you can even do things like this where you're making like a reflected light here and you could even go type like I'm on 17% right now and this allows me to go in and slowly build it up with these little washes and if I want to do like more subtle effects like here maybe pick out the lower eyelid maybe add you know there's some lights over here reflecting onto them and if I want to paint more of the shadow I just go back to my brush tool probably should add a bit to the hand here back to the eraser and like maybe 11 percent is a bit low let me go a little higher so that's the gist of it now i'm not limited to this opacity being 100 percent. so if we think this is too much a bit overkill we can take it down a bit i can also use the smudge tool here to paint if i think that you know it's a bit too synthetic because sometimes that um, brush tool when you're doing these opacity erasures they, and with the round one it can look a little bit digital so depending on what brush tool you use some of them i find are a bit uh, too extreme like this one if i go in a bit closer you'll see it's making this kind of banding effect again i can go back to the brush fuzzy if i think i've overdone it here which i think i have soften it up again and that's it right so now to the light tool and this time i'm just going to go for white something really simple and let's just start putting in some highlights. Now again, we don't have to go with that um, blend mode. So let's just go through the some of the samples. I'm using the up and down arrow keys just to toggle through. And you'll see some of them, like here we go, soft light. If I switch it on and off, very subtle. So I would stick with normal for this one just for now. And I would take it down to about maybe 70%. Make sure we're on the soft brush. You can continue to add these layers. You can make two, three, four shadow layers. If you want another shadow layer with a different blend mode, you could do it. If you need to add something that's just like a different value, uh, let's pick the uh, another one of the soft brushes for this. Again, make sure our opacity for some of these could be a bit lower. So, you know, if you want to add more tonal value to it, you can do that. And you can take it down to, you know, whatever opacity you want. So. Let me delete that layer. I'm going to stick to just the one for this. And let's see if I add the ink layer back. As you can see, it's now trashed. So I would need to redo the ink layer to work with these new values, or just take the ink layer and bring the, the values down until I keep some of the color of the ink line. 
So you have to play with this quite a bit, but that's a really nice kind of shadow for this character. And again, uh, we can move him around. You know, if I bring my other character in now, I just put this guy on top. You know, we can flip horizontally. We can do all kinds of different things. So he's not, you know, married to one background. So that's the process of adding shadows and highlights. A couple of different ways of doing it. Um, very quick introduction to it, but the important thing is to keep things flexible. So everything's on different layers. You can move them around. You can delete them as you need. You can change them. Essentially, that's the a really good approach for maximum control and flexibility of coloring your character.